today we are going to discuss about the components of the thermal power plant or the simply is represent for the equipments of a steam power station generally in the thermal power plant the major component is coal storage plant coal handling plant hash storage plant hash handling plant boiler superheater economizer air preheater turbine condenser alternator exciter these are comes under for the major component in the thermal power plants but the coal storage plant coal handling plant hash storage plant hash handling plant is the separate section that is once we are importing the coal from the coal mine by railways roadways or seaways we are unloading the coal and after that we are unloading the coal we can prepare the coal with the help of the coal pulverization that is the crushed into small pieces or powder by using ball mill hammer mill ball and then bowl mill once the coal is burning in the boiler furnace the output that is 30 to 40 percentage in terms of unburnt fuel or hash that is collected in the hash handling plant after that the hash storage plant it should be send it away from the power plant every weekly ones are 15 days one now that is the major the component of the thermal power plant or it is represent for the equipment of the steam power station the primary thing is nothing but the steam generating equipment the steam generating equipment comes under for boiler superheater economizer air preheater and electrostatic precipitator this all comes under for the steam generating equipment in that the first one is nothing but the boiler boiler is nothing but a closed vessel in which water is converted into steam by utilizing the heat of coal combustion by utilizing the heat of coal combustion that is in the boiler it is a closed vessel the water is converted in the form of steam by using the fuel that is the coal as in the boiler furnace here the generated steam is high pressure and then high temperature that steam drives the steam turbine which converts the steam energy into mechanical energy but here the requirements of the boiler is the boiler the weight it should be light in weight due to that the transportation is simple and erection is also very very easy suppose if the boiler weight is high means the transportation is difficult and the erection is also difficult and the space requirement should be less we are choosing the boiler the space requirement it should be less and installation must be simple the space requirement is also very very less and the operation of the boiler must be uninterrupted it should be highly reliable actually in the thermal power plant based upon the temperature we are generating the power actually the water is converted in the form of steam with high pressure and then temperature due to that we are generating the power in the thermal power plant the temperature is maintained for 250 degree centigrade to 500 degree centigrade 250 degree centigrade to 500 degree centigrade that is the minimum temperature is 250 degree centigrade and the maximum temperature is 500 degree centigrade if uninterrupted we are choosing the uninterrupted boiler means always the temperature is maintained for constant suppose if the boiler is shut down for half an hour again the temperature is fallen again we want to bring it to this actual temperature it takes the minimum time period either half an hour or one hour already we know that the conventional power plant is continuous and constant power generation continuous and constant power generation in a day 24 hours we are generating the power and maintain the throughout the period the constant power generation these are the various requirements of the boiler the primary thing is we need to produce quality and then quantitative requirement with minimum cost the boiler you are choosing is nothing but quality and then quantitative with minimum cost another one the weight should be very very less in weight if the weight is increased means the transportation is difficult and the erection is also difficult we are choosing the boiler the erection is simple and the maintenance is also simple the space requirement is less the space requirement is less these are the various requirement of the boiler and coming to the classification of boiler in the thermal power plant the boiler are classified for two types one is for water tube boiler another one is for the 
five tube boiler. The thermal power plant. The boilers are classified for two types. One is for water tube boiler. Another one is for the fire tube boiler. This diagram is represent for the water tube boiler. This is the first one, and the second one is represent for the fire tube boiler. In water tube boiler, water flows through the tube, and the hot gases of the combustion flow over this tube. Now you can observe here. In the tube, the water is flowing inside the tube, surrounded the the fire is there. The surrounded the fire is there. But throughout the universal, from all the power plant, they are prepared only for the water tube boiler. Actually, there are two types of boiler is there in the thermal power plant. The classification one is for the water tube boiler, another one is for the fire tube boiler. In water tube boiler, the water is flowing inside the tubes. The water is flowing inside the tubes, surrounded the apply for the fire. Due to that, the efficiency is more. Another one requires less space. And the output we are getting for more efficiency. Now you can observe here the surrounded the fire due to that the water it's bring from the temperature is costly. The temperature carries the costly. And another thing here we are applying the in the boiler furnace one is nothing but the fuel that is in the thermal power plant the fuel we are using for coal. The atmospheric air to burn the fuel costly. Another one water. The water we are using in the boiler. Whenever the fuel is burning, the atmospheric air is entered automatically. It should be burned for fastly. It should burn for fast due to that. That is the air and the fuel is inlet. That is atmospheric air is we are given for the inlet. It is carried from the forced draft fan. That is air preheater. It should be supplied from the boiler furnace. The boiler furnace. Whenever the boiler furnace the Burn the coal is burning. That is, this is nothing but the combustion chamber. In the tubes of the boiler, this is nothing but here we are using for the water tube boiler. The water is circulated inside the tubes. The water is circulated inside the tube, and the fire is surrounding. Due to that, this water is converted in the form of steam. The water is converted in the form of steam. This is nothing but the generated steam with high pressure and then temperature. If directly this steam drives the steam turbine. The turbines are damaged. The turbine blades are damaged due to the small amount of the wet particle is there. That is in that vapor, small amount of the moisture particle, the water particle is there. If directly the steam drives the steam turbine, the turbine blades are damaged. To avoid that one, we are using for superheater. We are using for superheater. Here in the flue gases, that is the wastage of the flue gases is there. These flue gases. We can use it reheating in the superheater, economizer, and then air preheater. Again, once the water is continuously, the steam is generated in air 24 hours. In air 365 days, the water level it will be reduced. Again, we want to power the water. This is nothing but the water inlet. The water is carried from the fed water through economizer. The fed water pump to the economizer. Now this is here. The advantage is nothing but they require less space, and the efficiency can be maintained throughout the period, and the efficiency is also more in the water tube boiler. The water tube boiler, and one more thing, the construction is very very simple. The water tube boiler, and the efficiency is maintained from 85 to 90 percentage. In the water tube boiler, the efficiency is maintained from 85 to 90 percent, and In this, the water tube boiler always maintained for the same temperature because here the surrounded the steam is the fire is there. The water is circulated inside the tubes. And another thing, the steam pressure of the water tube boiler is unlimited. The steam pressure of the water tube boiler is unlimited. These are the various advantages. Coming to the fire tube boiler, this is nothing but the fire tube boiler. In fire tube boiler, the hot products of the combustion passes. In the tube, surrounded by water, surrounded by water. The fire tube boiler. The another name is nothing but the tubular boiler. The another name of the water tube boiler is nothing but tubular boiler. Tubular boiler. Here, this is the very simple for visible and the rugged construction, and the initial cost is also very very less. You can observe here. This is nothing but the furnace. This is nothing but the boiler furnace. In that the furnace, the steam that is the fire is burning. 
inside the tube inside the internally the fire is burning the surrounded by the water the surrounded by the water due to that the main drawback is the steam outlet it will be very very less the steam outlet it will be very very less whenever the water is injected whenever the water is injected if internally fire means the surrounding the water that much of the fire is not sufficient that much of the fire is not sufficient to maintain the constant always constant to maintain the temperature constant always here the steam production is less in this the fire tube boiler the steam production is less and it's not suitable for the large power plant it is not suitable for the large power plant the maximum the outlet it should be concentrated only for the 20 megawatts the maximum it should be concentrated for the 20 megawatts the fire tube boiler is not suitable for the large power plant and it occupies for more space because the internally fire the external surrounded by the water the external surrounded by the water for that purpose the space requirement is more and the construction is very very difficult in the fire tube boiler next the boiler the maintenance is also very very difficult and the transportation is also difficult because in the fire tube boiler the weight is more due to that the transportation is difficult that is vice versa of the water tube boiler generally in the all the power plant the maximum they will be preferred for the water tube boiler here we can generate it up to the 500 megawatts in water tube boiler we can generate the power up to 500 megawatt but in fire tube boiler we can generate the maximum power up to the 20 megawatts and one more thing here the construction is difficult in the fire tube boiler the efficiency we are getting only for 80 to 85 percentage 80 to 85 percentage the remaining the 50 percent in terms of losses that is nothing but the flue gases but in water tube boiler the losses is only 10 percent that is nothing but the flue gases Again, we are reusing these flue gases through superheater, economizer, air preheater. The remaining in that the 40 to 50 percent it will be go out through the chimney. It will go out through the chimney. The main thing is nothing but the difference of the water tube boiler and the fire tube boiler. In water tube boiler, the water is flowing inside the tubes. The water is flowing inside the tube, surrounded the combustion of the fire the surrounding the combustion of the fire but in the fire tube boiler the hot gas of combustion flow inside the tube surrounded the water and this the water tube boiler it should be fired externally it should be fired externally but in the fire tube boiler it should be fired internally that is nothing but the internal fire and uh, the rate of combustion the production is the steam production is high in the water tube boiler because the surrounded the heat the water is flowing inside the tubes due to that the steam production is high in fire tube boiler the steam production is low and it can be applicable for medium as well as for the large power plant we can go for a 250 megawatt power plant or 500 megawatt power plant or 350 megawatt power plant but this the fire tube boiler it is not suitable for the large power plant but maximum it should be withstand up to the 20 megawatt we can go up to 50 megawatt also we can go up to 50 to 60 megawatt but the main drawback is here the fire is internally fired due to that the steam production is very very less the steam production is very very less and one more thing in the water tube boiler the space requirement is less and the construction is also easier the transportation is easy the transportation is easy due to the less in weight due to the less in weight but in the fire tube boiler the space requirement is more the weight is also high the construction is difficult and the transportation is also difficult in the fire tube boiler and the major drawback in the water tube boiler is that is easily accessible that is all the axillary parts are not easily accessible for cleaning repair and then maintenance for cleaning maintenance and then repair but here in fire tube boiler this is the advantage the various parts are easily accessible the various parts are easily accessible this is nothing but the steam generating equipment consists of the primary thing is nothing but boiler the second one superheater extra third one is economizer and the fourth one is air preheater generally in the boiler the water is converted in the form of steam based upon the thermal power plant there are two types of boiler one is for the water tube boiler another one is for the 
fire tube boiler. In the thermal power plant, the temperature is maintained from 250 degree centigrade to 500 degree centigrade. 500 degree centigrade. We want to generate the power either 300 megawatt or 350 megawatt or 400 megawatt. The minimum temperature is required from 250 degree centigrade. Here, the boiler are classified for two types. One is for water tube boiler, another one is for the fire tube boiler. In water tube boiler, the water is flowing inside the tube surrounded the fire. That is here, the three parameters are required. One is nothing but the air, another one water, next one is fuel. Next one is fuel. In the thermal power plant, the fuel we are using is the coal. The water we are using in the boiler, the atmospheric air is supplied through the air preheater to burn the coal fastly, to burn the coal fastly, to produce the steam high pressure and then temperature, to produce the steam high pressure and then temperature. You can observe here, in that the water tube boiler, the water is flowing inside the tube surrounded by the fire, due to that the steam produced is more and the space requirement is less, the space requirement is less and this generated steam drives the steam turbine through superheater through superheater if directly strikes the without superheater the turbine blades are damaged to formation of the corrosion to formation the blades are damaged due to the moisture this is nothing but the wet steam the small amount of the moisture particle is there if directly drives means damaged the blades again in the superheater reheating the flue gases that is the outlet in that the water tube boiler the efficiency is 85 to 90 percent 85 to 90 percent the 10 percentage of the steam is wasted in the water tube boiler that wastage in terms of flue gases that is we are reheating the superheater economizer and air preheater through flue gases through flue gases that is the wastage of the steam, we are reheating the superheater. In that the superheater, it brings from the above boiling point, above boiling point. The next one is the fire tube boiler. In fire tube boiler, the water is the surrounding, the fire is burned for the internal. The fire is burned for internally. The surrounded the water, the fire is burned for internal. Due to that, the efficiency is less. The efficiency is less. It can be applicable only for 20 megawatts. It should be applicable only for the 20 megawatts. And now you can see the comparison between water tube boiler and then fire tube boiler. You can observe here the position of the water and then hot gases. In water tube boiler, the water is flowing inside the tube surrounded combustion of the fuel. But in the fire tube boiler, the fire is flowing inside the tube. That is nothing but the internal combustion, the surrounded by water. Mode of firing. How it is the firing in the water tube boiler? The externally fired. The water tube boiler is the burning for externally. And the fire tube boiler, the internally fired, surrounded by the water. The next one, the operating pressure. And generally here, the pressure is more in the water tube boiler in terms of 100 bar. But in the fire tube boiler, the pressure is less. That is nothing but the 60 bar. And rate of steam production, the water tube boiler, the steam production is high. In fire tube boiler, the steam production is low because the surrounded the water due to that, the steam production is very, very less. And another one, the shootability, generally in the water tube boiler, the shootable for large power plant because the temperature is maintained from 250 degree centigrade to the 500 degree centigrade. But in the fire tube boiler, it is not shootable for the large power plant. Because here we are generating only for the 20 megawatts. We are generating only for 20 megawatts. And the space requirement, the water tube boiler, the space requirement is less. And the construction is also simple. The transportation is also easy due to the light in weight. But in the fire tube boiler, the space requirement is more. And the weight is also more weight. Due to the more weight, the transportation is difficult. The construction is also difficult. And in terms of exploration, the water tube boiler is less and the fire tube boiler is more. And the next 
the steam generating equipment the first one is nothing but the boiler the second one is the super heater in the main function of the super heater is we are observing the moisture particle in that the boiler the output steam and improving the efficiency above the boiling point that is the super heater is a device which superheats the steam that is raise the temperature of steam above boiling points of water it increases the overall efficiency of the plant this increases the overall efficiency of the plant due to the super heater we are using the flue gases the super heater economizer and then air preheater we are improving the efficiency that is 5 to 10 percent actually in the thermal power plant the losses is 71 percentage the losses is 71 percentage in the boiler losses is nothing but 16 percent and turbine loss is nothing but 54 percent and alternator is one percent that is 71 percent the efficiency we are getting for 29 percentage the efficiency is 29 percentage we are reheating in the intermediate stages due to the flue gases super heater air preheater and then economizer the efficiency can be improved from 5 to 10 percentage 5 to 10 percent that is the efficiency we can bring from 30 to 35 percentage the efficiency we can bring from 30 to 35 percentage that is the super heater consists of the group of tubes made of special alloy steel such as chromium small body that is the super heater transfers the heat of flue gases by two methods one is nothing but the radiant super heater another one is nothing but the convection or convective super heater convection or convective super heater in the radiant super heater this is nothing but the radiant super heater that is the super heater receives heat from the burning fuel through the radiation process through the radiation process it is placed in furnace between the furnace water wall now this is nothing but the furnace is there in between the furnace water wall they are kept for the super heater here the major drawback is the dropping characteristics high and one more thing the temperature of the super heater falls with increase in the steam output steam output but maximum all the power plant they will be preferred for the convective super heater the convective super heater means the receives heat from the flue gases in the convection process this is nothing but the boiler furnace is there the wastage in the form of flue gases that is the 10 percent we are using in the boiler water heater the boiler water heater that is 85 to 90 percentage is the efficiency 10 percent is loss in the form of flue gases that is we are reusing in the super heater economizer and then air preheater in the convection process we are heating with the help of the flue gases in the process of convection process it is placed in the boiler tube bag it is placed in the boiler tube bag. in the convection process the commonly used as raising characteristics that is the temperature of the superheater increases as with increasing in the steam output in this the superheater observe the moisture particle and improve the above boiling temperature due to that the efficiency should be increased up to the five percentage up to five percentage here this the superheated steam drives the steam turbine with high pressure and then temperature with high pressure and temperature through valve this is nothing but the valve is there after that the valve we are using for the steam turbine based upon the demand we are adjusting for the valve controller based upon the demand we are adjusting for the valve controller the superheater is classified for two types one is nothing but the radiant superheater another one is for the convection superheater but in the, all the power plant they are preferred only for the convection type superheater convection type superheater the next one is nothing but the economizer that is from the boiler output in the flue gases that is 10 percentage wasting in the steam that is we are reusing in the superheater economizer another one is for the air preheater in that the economizer this is nothing but the fed water heater the economizer is fed water heater it is placed in between superheater and the boiler again all the flue gases the wastage of the flue gases the complete 10 percent we are not utilized completely in the superheater only two or three percent we are utilizing remaining it will be goes through the economizer there we are utilizing for one or two percent and remaining it will be goes through the air preheater there it should be utilized one or two percent remaining it will be goes through the 
atmosphere through chimney through chimney now in the economizer the economizer is nothing but the fed water heater the water is heated from the flue gases the water is heated from the flue gases here the water it will be inlated from the cooling tower the water is inlated from the cooling tower that is it should be maintained from some amount of temperature that is either 35 or 40 maximum up to 80 to 120 degrees centigrade the water is carried from the tubes the water is carried inside the tubes here the flue gases it will be inlet and outlet the flue gases it will be flowing the surrounding in this the tubes already the water is flowing due to that the steam it is similar to the water tube boiler the water is flowing inside the tube surrounded by the heat due to this flue gases again the water it will be bring from some amount of the temperature again that hot water it will be outlet it is goes to the boiler it should be goes to the boiler. now by using this the economizer we are improving the efficiency that is 10 to 12 percent we are improving the efficiency in the boiler we are improving the efficiency in the boiler 10 to 12 percent with this help of the economizer the water is reheated and the temperature it should be bring from either 120 or 130 or 140 degrees centigrade in the water outlet due to that the boiler efficiency should be increased from 10 to 12 percent once the boiler efficiency is increased means automatically the fuel consumption is also minimized the fuel consumption is also minimized that is the boiler the efficiency is increased from 10 to 12 percentage due to that the efficiency the fuel consumption can save from 5 to 15 percentage once we are saving the fuel that it will be utilized for the future generally at present day to day the fossil fuels are depleted the available the fossil fuels are up to 2026 almost all we can go for the 40 to 50 percent of the power generation by using fossil fuel in the year completely 2032 to 34 it should be depleted the maximum 90 percentage 90 percentage you can save the fuel by using intermediate reheating the intermediate stages through superheater economizer and air preheater you can save the 5 to 15 percent of the fuel it can be utilized for the future that is tomorrow or day after tomorrow future one month or future one year or two years we can save the fuel this is nothing but the economizer and the next component of the steam generating plant is air preheater the air preheater is placed in between economizer and then the boiler the function of the air heater is to extract heat from the flue gases and give it to the air being supplied to the furnace for coal combustion by using this air preheater with the help of the forced draft fan collected the atmospheric air and given into the air to the boiler furnace here you can see here the air it is the inlet and the boiler furnace already the fuel gas from this the economizer this is the tubes the surrounding the fuel is burning the inlet the atmospheric air we want to give in atmosphere always the climate is not same in year 365 days based upon the season the climate is changed that is the rainy season monsoon season and the summer season some of the time in the rainy season in the atmospheric air the small amount of the moisture the water particle is there directly it sent to the boiler furnace the temperature is fallen suddenly the temperature is fallen suddenly due to that already in that the thermal power plant the efficiency we are getting for 29 percentage suddenly the temperature is reduced uh, suddenly the efficiency is fallen means again we are getting only 20 percent or 21 or 22 percentage again we are not satisfied for the consumer for that purpose that the air we can carry from the forced draft fan through sent to the boiler via air preheater in the air preheater utilized for the flue gases the air preheater utilized for the flue gases that air it should be bring from some amount of the temperature due to that the efficiency should be maintained for increase and the boiler efficiency is also increased that is two to three percentage due to that the fuel consumption is minimized here there are two types is that one is nothing but recapturative type another one is for the regenerative type recapturative type means a group of steel tube the flue gases are passed to the tube the air flows externally to the tubes the air flows externally to the tubes once the air it will be flowing externally means this is nothing but the tubes is there the, the air is inside now in the tube 
the steam is flowing in the tube the steam is flowing surrounded the air means surrounded the air means again in the atmospheric air the temperature is reduced in the regenerative type means inside the tube the air is flowing surrounded the flue gases surrounded the flue gases due to that the temperature is increased actually in that the thermal power plant they are preferred for the regenerative type air preheater the regenerative type air preheater and the next one is nothing but the electrostatic precipitator this is the major equipment in the thermal power plant actually the flue gases the wastage is nothing but the 10 percent in this flue gases the small particle of the fumes is available due to that it releases for the sulfuric oxide another one is for the nitrous oxide sulfuric oxide another one is for the nitrous oxide due to the sulfuric oxide it destroyed for the living organism and it should be destroyed for the leaves so on etc the vegetable so many things and due to the nitrous oxide affected for the human being due to respiration problem that is the breathing problem is arises to avoid that one we are using for the electrostatic precipitate the flue gases the 10 percent evasion it goes to the superheater again economizer again air preheater air preheater even though three to four percentage of the steam is wasted that it will be goes through the chimney through natural draft pan through natural draft pan here it polluted to the environment the surrounding 10 to 15 kilometer for that purpose the thermal power plant is constructed away from the populated area away from the populated area with this the help of electrostatic precipitator the primary collector as supplementary units the cyclone collector here whenever entering into the flue gases in this the duct you can given for the additional again the charging dc supply is given due to that the fine minute the fine particle it should be observed again it should be discharged to the bottom of the furnace discharged to the bottom of the furnace even though again the one to two percent it will be entering to the atmospheric heat. and with the help of the electrostatic precipitator you can remove of the dust and ash particle carried with exhaust gas of in the particular thermal power plant itself again here we want to give for the dc supply in the particular electrostatic precipitator to operate that one then it should be going to the environment three to four percent in that the more than 60 to 70 percent of the dust the finite particle it should be observed due to that the minimize for the release of the sulfuric oxide and then nitrous oxide we can save for the environment we can save for the environment and next topic is nothing but the condenser actually in that the turbine the 54 percent of the steam is wasted in the turbine the ejected in the turbine is nothing but the 54 percent of the steam that steam is collected in the condenser that vapor we can convert it in the form of water that we can recirculate it to the cooling tower again that water we can reheat it that send it to the economizer through fed water pump by using this the condenser we can exhaust the steam used as a fed water for the boiler there are two types of condenser is there one is nothing but the jet type condenser another one is for the surface type condenser in jet type condenser means the cooling water and exhaust steam are mixed together now you can see this is nothing but fed water from the boiler and the steam is ejected the both are merged means again the efficiency is smaller the again efficiency is reduced the efficiency is reduced here the advantage is nothing but advantages in the jet condenser is nothing but the initial cost is less the space requirement is also less and the maintenance is less but the major drawback is the condensated is wasted that is the 54 percentage is wasted we are utilized in this only for the 10 percentage we are utilized only in the 10 to 15 percentage and if you go for the surface condenser here it is not a direct contact between cooling water and then exhaust steam the cooling water and then exhaust steam now this is the steam is injected the water it will be flowing inside the tube the water is flowing inside the tube due to that the water the temperature is increased the water temperature is increased maximum the water temperature is increased maximum the water it will be inleted the water is flowing inside the tube due to that the temperature is 
increased maximum and the major advantage of this the surface condenser is we can improve the efficiency 5 to 10 percentage and the steam is not wasted the water is flowing inside the tube surrounded by the steam the wastage of steam is nothing but 54 percentage in that how much is the efficiency of the boiler almost all in that 60 percent of the, of the steam is there suppose in the boiler output is you can take 400 degree centigrade 400 degree centigrade again this 400 degree centigrade we are reheating in the superheater the temperature is comes from the 420 degree centigrade this drives the steam turbine the ejected in the turbine is nothing but the drop is either 360 degree centigrade again we are reheating maximum they are preferred in that thermal power plant surface condenser the thermal power plant they are used is nothing but surface 